Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. I know this is a video kind of out of nowhere, but I've got a lot more time now that things are happening in the world, and that means more content. So today I've kind of gone ahead and made a top speed bugo. What I'm going to be doing is I'll be running through this build, and then we're going to be coming back and tweaking it. Uh, so this is actually based off of the uh, bugo that I made for the key showcase, although that bugo didn't work. It's basically just a redone version of the bugo, specifically to conform to the newer version of the game because the old bugo wouldn't work in new automation. So basically what I've done is I've put this car all the way up to 2020, highest possible quality everything, and I fit a 1700 horsepower twin turbo V6 uh, longitudinally mounted underneath it. So <laughs> it's packing some heat down there and some interesting things that I've discovered as well as I've been testing this. So the game will give you a readout here of what it anticipates your top speed is going to be, but that's not necessarily going to be the case. Like over here in drivetrain, you're potentially going to be able to get up to 663 over here with the gearing. However, your actual top speed is closer to this. And there are definitely some factors that affect that. Uh, the biggest factor that I've been having an issue with at this current point is the engine and, uh, well, overheating. But the reason it's overheating is because of another thing that I did where I made the aerodynamics such that uh, there was no cooling at all in the engine. So it didn't, isn't exactly helping. I had this car fitted with 900 horsepower and I was able to get up to uh, 330 kilometers an hour and that's the fastest I've been able to do. The actual land top speed record I believe is 450 kilometers an hour, something like that, but I haven't been able to get close to that with this body style unfortunately. As much as I want that record, it's just not gonna happen with this body style. I think the only way is probably to get something a lot wider, a lot longer, and maybe just a little bit more realistic for what is actually gonna be able to go that fast. So what I want to do then is I'm gonna take you on a journey here quickly in beam. I don't usually jump to beam this quickly, but we're going to go ahead and try it. And then uh, I'll show you what this car can do in its current state. And then I'm going to turn down the power and make a few other little adjustments. And then we'll try it again. And I guess we'll kind of just adjust and move from there back and forth until we get it to a reasonable top speed. My goal is 350. That's 100 less than top speed ever. So we'll see what we can do. All right, so here is that Bugo. This is that 1700 horsepower top speed Bugo I was talking about. You'll notice the wheels are like this. Uh, they're very high in the sidewall and very low in the rim size. And there is a reason for that, which you shall see soon. But let's go ahead and accelerate. I've got an airspeed meter up on the left. Actually, it's kind of low on the left, but watch that. Don't watch the actual speed meter because this thing has some uh, ridiculous wheel spin. <laughs> all right, here we go. I should mention as well that it is all wheel drive, uh, but that doesn't really mean much from what I can tell because once we get started here, things will just kind of take off. This is a bit of a rocket ship. Okay, we're slowly climbing. It does take a while because the gears are super short. Actually, super long, sorry. Uh, but 300 kilometers an hour is within reach. You'll notice immediately things are overheating. And uh, yeah, that's not exactly what we want out of this one. <laughs> the car is overheating though, which is the biggest issue I'm having with high horsepower. However, uh, if we try to avoid that, let's just stop Actually, let's just reset. So if we try to avoid overheating like that, uh, I know we can do better in terms of power. But there's also another technique that I've sort of found, and that's if you deflate the tires beforehand, it tends to go faster. No idea why. So let's just go ahead and start off like this. Uh, I'll watch the temperature and make sure that things are going okay, and let's see if we can increase 300 k's an hour uh, with this extremely powerful Buco. <laughs> oh yeah, and we're doing this all on flat tires as well. Still not sure why that works, it just seems to work better physics-wise in this game, and it always has to be large uh, wheels like this as well, uh, I don't know why. Okay, so we're doing good so far in terms of cooling, but as soon as we sort of hit that power, it's going to start going up and up and up and up, so I'm actually going to pre-shift, uh, and we're still cruising now. Oh, maybe pre-shifted a little bit too early, we'll have to let it build up that boost a little bit more. There we go. And, <laughs> okay, apparently not. Yeah, we're cruising at a very nice and steady 294, actually 30 something now. The car is slightly moving. This is kind of what happens with this, unfortunately. If I drop down in the gears, we're going to accelerate like crazy. So here, all the way up to 320, 330. I'm seeing a 334. That might be the fastest I've ever gone with this thing. And that's with a uh, now-blown engine. 
or at least partially blown. Well, that was pretty decent. Let's go back into automation, see if we can tweak this so it doesn't overheat, and maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to get a little bit more power out of it. Oh yeah, I put some uh, stealthy exhaust on there, and I'm really liking the way that this smoke comes out of it. It looks really cool. But anyway, back to automation. So you've seen what the Bugo can do. Now I think it's time that I show you what it's made out of in order to make that happen. Uh, so it's carbon fiber, as you probably would have guessed. The entire car is actually made out of carbon fiber. The only carbon fiber Bugo in the world. Uh, with a monocoque chassis, carbon fiber again, and longitudinal engine placement. The reason for that is I want it to be high displacement. The bigger the displacement of the engine, the more power we can get. And then more power is generally a good thing. And then I've got double wishbone and push rod on the back. Plus 15 quality all the way around. In the engine, we have... 1701 horsepower it is a v6 a big 90 degree v6 in fact 5.6 liters really high stroke so it really doesn't like this high rpm which is kind of why we're having issues and then basically i've done everything i can uh, to just give it more power i'm sure i could get more power than this but it would be at the expense of these things here which is already not working out for us so here i'll just flip through this a bit but yeah it's it's basically just the best of the best like highest possible everything um, and those are the overall stats right there it's a pretty meaty v6 though it's working quite well except for the overheating part so the body quality is plus 15 and uh, the color is just the same as that key bugo although i think i might change it for the purposes of um this video i don't know we might come back to that and then styling of course is just bugo there's nothing else to be said about that it's always just going to be the bugo okay so here's where things get sort of interesting uh, I've got it all-wheel drive, but it is a front bias all-wheel drive, 60% in the front, 39% in the back, and my thinking in that is that the more of the weight is on the front, like it's a decently sized engine, and it's all right here, so then we need a bit more power this way. I've given it a sequential, probably doesn't need that, and it's a 4-speed, uh, mostly just for the reasons of weight, and we're also not using most of the, of the other speeds, uh, and I've got it at the absolute max top speed possible. That's not really necessary, we could lower that, but it just means it has super, super long gears, which is also the reason that the spacing is way down, and that is also because wheel spin is a significant issue. Uh, we've got an electric LSD, just to keep things in order, and over here on the wheels. Uh, so this is where I've done the most of my tuning so far with this. Uh, I've chosen radials with semi-slicks because it just seems to work with weight. And then I want as thin tires as I can possibly get, so it's got 135s. They're pretty thin on there, but they're working for this. And then I have the tire diameter maxed, and I have the rim diameter uh, down as low as it can get, because it seems like we need sidewall for this, as odd as that is. And of course, carbon fiber with plus 15 quality. Over in the brakes, basically all I've done is made them as small as possible, and therefore as light as possible. Carbon ceramic are the lightest of the brakes, as you can see here, and then one piston as well is the lightest of the carbon ceramic brakes. So they're just super small, basically as small as they can get. In terms of downforce, all I've done is I've just clicked the downforce option, and it is at a zero downforce. Uh, level basically as we go forward all the way up to 360 or 70 kilometers an hour we're only making a little bit of uplift so it's not a big deal uh, we're deep in understeer, understeer territory but the whole idea of this car is that it doesn't steer uh, we just want to go as straight as possible so this is fine and this cooling is important because if this goes up this means that uh, our top speed will go down so if we look at our current top speed possibility, we're at 373, and then if we go ahead and go over to aerodynamics, raise this up to, say, 50%, which is pretty significant, uh, we're down to 350. So we cool the engine, although probably not really with an engine this beefy, and we're losing a lot of potential top speed, so it doesn't quite work out. And that's why it's all the way down at the bottom. Same thing with brake airflow. We don't really care about this. It's just going to be all the way down here. <laughs> On the interior, it is the tiniest of seats the half seats they are indeed lighter than a single seat so that's what i've gone with and the most basic of, in of interiors plus high quality interior actually means lower weight so that's what i've gone with same thing down here except it's reversed low quality traction aids is lower weight and low quality safety is lower weight as well so suspension um uh, <laughs> nothing really fancy going on here just standard springs gas monotube passive um, I'm just using this as a setup. I think we could probably get away with having active sway bars, although that's not exactly doing much. Um, and then it's it's a race preset, 
to start off with and then I made the dampers and springs really hard and I lowered the car down as low as it'll go uh, just to keep that center of gravity as low as possible and then dampers are super hard because we don't want it to uh, like squat too much under the pressure of going so fast it basically sits at its current ride height and does not change so yeah that is the bugo that is this bugo top speed in its current state and I think it's time that we modified it just a little bit for the purposes of going even faster. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the Bugo Top Speed 2, so we don't overwrite the current one that I have. Uh, and then I'm also going to change the primary color just because I want to see something different. Okay, we'll pick the color based on the hood color. Um, orange Bugo has always been one of my favorite colors for this, but uh, let's go ahead and paint it purple because how could we not? I mean, the whole idea of this Bugo is that we launch it into the stars, isn't it? Oh no, wait, I already have one that's purple. <laughs> okay, never mind, I've got to change it. Okay, so it's going to be bright pink. Uh, that will hopefully differentiate it from the others. Yeah, just makes perfect sense. And then on the fixtures as well, I was thinking this should probably not be uh, whatever color that is. We'll just make it so it doesn't color match. It's the small stuff that matters, and that uh, that makes it look a little bit nicer. Okay, so our hot pink top speed bugo is at least differentiated from the rest of the bugo pack. But there's one thing I want to do, and now this might be a little bit controversial, but I kind of hinted towards it earlier. 1700 horsepower is too much. Uh, we're having issues already with that, so I'm going to go ahead and lower it significantly. Um, I'm actually going to lower it all the way down to... Well, this isn't exactly the best way to do it, but maybe, just maybe, if we go for... Oh, jeez. Okay, I found another way to tune it. My mistake here. Okay, I'm going to lower down the boost. Actually, apparently we're gaining power when I lower the boost. That's kind of the opposite of what I thought would happen. Lowering the AR ratio is actually giving us more power as well, but maybe a little bit farther down. That's actually kind of a good thing. You know what? Maybe 1250 horsepower is a little bit better than uh, 1100 like I was thinking. This is, well, it's not killing the pistons as badly. And doing this, we can actually lower the RPM uh, a little bit, hopefully relieving these. So we'll see if this works. If not, I'll have to jump back in and uh, make a couple adjustments. All right, out of curiosity, the game still thinks we can do 377 Ks an hour. That is pretty darn fast. Actually, is that faster than it was anticipating before? It's kind of just been hovering around that for a while. I'm not sure. Uh, but I think this Bugo might be ready for a shot at the very least. I'm going to give it a test first, and then uh, I'll show you what we've done with it. So I feel like a bit of a Hugo mad scientist right now because I've been bouncing back between beam and automation a bunch of times trying to tweak this thing, trying to find the right balance. We went from 1700 horsepower down to 1250 horsepower, down to now 990 horsepower, and still I'm coming up with the same engine cooling issues. Which would be what you would expect considering the car has zero engine cooling. But the problem is that I was able to get this to work before with 900 horsepower and not have any cooling issues at all. In fact, the car itself would just drive normally, even after going on a significant run, no smoke or any drama. Um, so it's kind of weird that this is happening now, but anyways, let me show you what I've done. So we're down to 990 horsepower, just like I said before. Temperature issues still withholding, uh, but our current biggest issue is that... Uh, it won't go past 300Ks now that I've put a 7-speed in it instead of a 4-speed. So let me give you a demo of what this looks like. Uh, the 7-speed is good because it allows me to shift a little bit earlier without letting the car get super hot, but at the same time that doesn't really give us the speed that we want. Uh, like Having lower gears like that is nice because it gives us the ability to I mean, get up a little bit faster in terms of speed quicker, but as you can see as the engine gets damaged we just get slower and then inevitably we drop off in speed and I don't know, we're just not being able to get up to that 300 kilometers an hour we were before. Now the interesting thing is that 990 horsepower is more than enough to get a car this light up to 300 k's an hour. It's not so much the power that's the issue, it's the chassis and the tuning and specifically the wheels. Uh, the wheels are definitely letting me down. So we can drive like this for quite a while, you can see we have two flat tires. Uh, but that just means the car is going to be in a perpetual drift. And that's why I did the thing that I did before where I popped the tires. Because if you pop them it just makes it easier to uh, drive in a straight line. And it's pretty much inevitable that it's going to happen no matter what. That the wheels will pop. So yeah, we may as well make use of that as we go here. So yeah, we're still climbing to 89 and it's relatively stable. I find that as soon as it hits 300Ks it just kind of 
drifts off to the side. Like, I'm not putting in any input. This is just the car steering itself into almost death here at the edge of this track. But if you've ever wanted to see what a Bugo doing 300 kilometers an hour out of control looks like, here is the external camera. Oh yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's flying by all that smoke and everything. And then it just disappears out of existence because it's out of the rendering range. But I just really like the way this is going. 300 something kilometers an hour. The Bugo is currently steering itself. I'm not doing anything except for holding the throttle. Even though the car is overheating drastically, it still pulls itself forward because it's got that front wheel drive bias. I don't know. It's, uh, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> so while this car is a bit of a failure at making it up to past, well, I've been able to get it up to 330. That was my max. That's the best I've ever done, and unfortunately I don't have it on video. I'd love to be able to show you, but that version of it is long gone as I've been toying with this for like two hours. Jumping back and forth between Beam and Automation to do a tuning thing like this is actually a ton of fun, and that's why I would recommend that you also do that. Go ahead and post in the Discord or in the comments if you happen to be able to make a chassis that is not supposed to go fast at all be able to do something north of 350 k's an hour. I'd like to see what your uh, build and setup is for doing that. This is sort of the same as what I was doing before, only this time we're going forwards instead of in reverse. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. Just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and set a few benchmarks. I'm gonna pull back out the uh, 1700 horsepower version. This car overheats in like 3 milliseconds, but we should be able to get something going here, and I'm gonna just quickly pop the tires ahead of time as well. I was able to do 320 something with this in a quick test before I started filming this portion of the video, so let's give this four speed a go. A reminder once again, this is the 1700 horsepower edition of this Bugo. Okay, flat tires definitely mean we have a lot of rolling resistance when we start, but it seems like they work quite well when we're actually moving. Uh, they seem to expand out a lot, and there's also another phenomenon I wanna show you uh, if we can get to a good speed in time. But this, like, four-speed gearbox is super laggy because um, the turbos in this thing are massive to make this much power, so we're just going to have to wait here for a bit. All right, here we go. We're getting up to that good speed. 250 kilometers an hour, and it's slowly on the boost. 300 and something kilometers an hour, and it's kind of rocking back and forth. But yeah, this one is uh, objectively faster than the other one, but that's not really not saying much because they're both ridiculously quick. Okay, 306, 307, 15, 17, oh, 18 I saw there. That was really fast. I'm going to be careful not to miss the times or the, the speed this time like I did in the reverse video. Okay, 306, 307 again, 308, 9, 10. If it can get going straight and not kind of drift its course a little bit, I'm just trying to very lightly correct it, uh, then it can go really fast. I just wish that it would hold its place here. Okay, we're into one of those like endless drifts, so I'm going to show you the other thing that I've noticed with these flat tires, and that is if you jam the brakes, they actually flatten and uh, they crinkle up as well, and the Bugo uses its chin spoiler as part of the brakes. And what kind of braking distance is that, goodness. But from 300 k's an hour, <laughs> with such tiny brakes, that's actually not too bad. Oh yeah, we do have to get hard on the throttle as well if we're gonna try and get up to speed here. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is just a bit of an experiment. Uh, I do have a couple other video ideas in the works, so don't worry about that. I was originally intending on doing a uh, speedrunning video, another one, a follow-up actually to the BeamNG one that I did, but I didn't uh, end up getting to finish some of the records I wanted to in time. Basically, the idea with that is I'm actually trying to break some of the records in the game, uh, like on the leaderboards, and I'm not sure that I'm actually going to be able to do that, but we'll see. Okay, this has got to be one of the slowest drives down at the start here, just because the engine is basically toast. I'm going to restart this thing. <laughs> we'll see what we can do with it. Oh yeah, this Bugo would be absolutely horrible on the drag strip, but the 7-speed one might actually be decently quick. I'm interested to try that as well. And just because the gears are so low, like the wheel spin is not that big a deal, uh, is especially when you're starting off. And that just means that we can uh, potentially come up with some pretty serious drag strip times. Okay, so we're cruising at... Oh, no, we're losing tires. Oh, that's too... Oh my goodness, 239, that is the... F or 339, that is the fastest I have seen. Goodness, apparently this one <laughs> has taken the reins. I was talking about drag racing, and here we are breaking my own records. <laughs> the 300 
150 kilometer an hour bugo might have been in my hands this entire time. Not exactly going to be working anymore, but that was a ridiculously good top speed. 339 kilometers an hour. So I was actually inspired to do this by this vehicle here. Uh, this is the uh, most horsepower SUV I've ever made, actually, in the game. Uh, one, of my, one of my more popular videos, although this thing is pretty crap. It's not exactly a good design or anything like that, but hey, I just want to show you what this thing will do in terms of top speed, keeping in mind that this has uh, 3,000 something horsepower. We'll actually put it in sport mode as well. But this car will pretty easily cruise past 400 k's an hour, as you can see. And I think the world speed record, like I said earlier, was 450 kilometers an hour, but this by itself can do that at a, at a pretty decent pace here. That's 460 kilometers an hour. That's ridiculous. Like, I'm just shocked that this thing is so stable at this speed, like 470 now kilometers an hour, and also not even overheating, although it did blow some gaskets before. Still, it's going up in speed. Like, I don't know if this is just because it's an older version of the game or something like that, but this thing, the Saint Ultra R, will do 480 kilometers an hour, and I didn't even tune it for top speed. This is just how it came. So it's unfortunate that the limits of the Bugo kind of prevent it from passing that 340 kilometer mark, especially because something like this can be so stable at this speed. Either way though, it's kind of losing it now. It's a pretty decent SUV, at least in terms of this metric. And because we're just kind of taking an aside on the topic here of the fastest and highest horsepower cars that I've ever made, this one here just happens to have 4300 horsepower out of a V16. Maximum size, I might add. Again, not a good build, but yeah, this is the Rhino R. Let me show you what kind of top speed this thing can get up to, uh, if we can actually get there before the engine itself destroys um, every internal piece inside of it and then spits them all out the back. But this thing weighs a ridiculous amount and still we're probably going to be able to get past what I was doing before. But that's mostly just because of sure power and speed. Um, having this much power, the power to weight ratio is... Uh, actually pretty decent on this all things considered. The biggest thing that hurts these rhinos and these heavier vehicles is that the brakes in automation even at maximum size cannot keep up. Alright well we're getting to the top of seventh gear here. I don't know how many speeds this thing has it is a dual clutch uh, but currently at 353 kilometers an hour again pretty darn fast. And one more before we end this thing off I want to show you another one with some ridiculously awkward wheels that uh, that can get up to some reasonable speed. And one thing I do want to try as well, um, it's too bad that mods aren't working right now, uh, in, at least in open beta, but I'm waiting for them to come back because I want to take these wheels to the next level in a build. And I want to try them on something like this, like a, an extremely fast car. Um, although it seems like these wheels might be exclusive to this Rhino body. Either way, let's give it a shot. Uh, this one only has uh, I don't even know how much horsepower it has, like 700 maybe, so this isn't going to be lightning quick, um, <laughs> as you can see. I've taken it on a four-wheel drive. Oh, we're going to... Oh yeah, no, we may have slightly clipped the uh, thing there, and now the entire chassis is jiggling. But wheels like this with 4,300 horsepower, like, yikes, this could be really good. So I might end up doing a swap at some point, and then maybe lightening the chassis, I don't know. I'm kind of obsessed with this idea of top speed now that I've been working on it. Still, the Saint Ultra R is the fastest car I've made at 470 k's an hour. Uh, it's just nothing can quite rival that yet. I mean, would you really feel comfortable doing 175 kilometers an hour in something this huge? Like, if you want to compare this to the Bugo, the wheels on this thing are taller than the Bugo. <laughs> just by themselves. It's basically a monster truck. Yeah, I think I did give this V12 a little bit of juice. It seems to have uh, <laughs> some racing intake, some racing wrapped exhaust and such, but it's not enough. We need more power. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of research into the Bugo. Maybe a bit of a shorter video as well. I'm not sure at this point. <laughs> I've been making my Beam and Automation video shorter, but that's not even intended. It just kind of happens to be that way. I've been cutting a lot more out, so yeah, hopefully you're still enjoying. I tend to think that people uh, watch the longer videos more. Not sure if that's correct though. Oh yeah, just expanding a little bit on what I said earlier, I do have a lot more time now uh, just because I, uh, <laughs> well, it's due to the current issues in the world. That's all I'll put there. It just means though that I'm gonna have the ability to 
potentially post uh, quite a bit more often than I was before. I might even do a stream or a video every day for the next week, kind of just see how that goes. The gist of it is I'm a bit of a full-time YouTuber now, at least for the time being, uh, depending on how things go in the world. So now more than ever, I appreciate your support on these videos, appreciate when you're commenting, liking, and also those people who decide to hit the join button. We have Canadian Steel, Overlord, Dr. Ivo, That Rice Dude Explorer, QT Bear, Terry Williams, The Most Random Person, Sick D Cars and Stuff, Boris Ramirez, Daniel, Justin, thank you all for your support. I appreciate all of you a lot, and those of you who are supporting here or on Twitch, on Twitter, Discord, whatever, I appreciate all of you, especially now that things are getting a little bit rough. Uh, yeah, I'm hopeful for the future though, and we'll see where this channel can go in the next couple weeks.